Welcome to what we think will be episode one of many <laughs> <laughs> of How I Got Hacked. And we're going to talk about security, we're going to talk about the breaches, which I've talked about on kind of one-off before, but I, I wanted some really smart people, so I got Xavier <laughs> and Mo here. Hello. And uh, they know a lot more about InfoSec than me. I really just run IT, DevOps, slash defense. They run a little bit more offense. Uh, Mo on the social engineering side, Xavier on the straight up pwn and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hive sec, net sec, uh, all things sec, binary sec, love sec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they're gonna help us along this journey and our plan is to get some stories together and really dive into, because we all have, we all of us have worked in here, uh, either through social engineering, how things were compromised, through bad engineering, how many things get compromised, <laughs> yes. or, um, or just sometimes through the weird series of happenstance that gets there. So our goal is to kind of do some deep dives, some behind the scenes, share some stories, because the big stories are always out there, Equifax and the Target Hack or any of those, but we want to talk about some of the smaller companies that got hit. Some of these are really clever. We're still going to mention some of the big ones because he's sitting there right here. Uh, Citrix got hacked. We, we, oh. This show was supposed to start 15 minutes ago, but then we opened the news. <laughs> we're like, whoa, hold on, wait, Citrix got hacked. Let's go read about that. Hackers get to reading hacker news. We get yeah. carried away. Yeah, so we're, their goal is to kind of talk about some of those stories and things like that. So, like I said, we all have kind of a background in it. You're, go ahead and start with Xavier here. Some of your background in, in tech. So cool. Yeah, so uh, formally introduce myself. My name is Xavier Johnson, Xavier D. Johnson to be specific. There's a lot of Xavier Johnsons. Uh, don't Google image me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my background, uh, I have a techno lust. I've been doing technology since I can't remember, right? Some of my earliest memories were uh, black screens with green letters uh, on CRTs. So uh, I am a kid of the 90s. Uh, I started my own company called Infinite Development Solutions when I was a senior in high school. Uh, I sold that company seven years later. Uh, I've done infotainment and worked with General Motors. Um, I've done a, a lot of cloud stuff uh, over at General Electric. And now I'm doing a lot of security stuff over at Dynatrace. And so uh, security is a passion of mine. I've uh, been pwning and owning for the last four years, uh, so yeah, I'm, st I'm legally, legally. <laughs> legally, of yeah. course, um, for big companies, allegedly yeah. pwning and owning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mo? Well, my name is Maurice Nash, and my background is social engineering. I am self-taught. I have had a techno lesson since the age of 13, and I just basically consult with my hacker friends on new techniques. <laughs> I don't have an extensive background like these two, but you know, I'm that learning. That he can speak of, allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> but he scares me more. <laughs> Because, you know, like I said, he's just talked me out of something. And I tell you, social engineering never, ever underestimated. It's still one of the most effective yes. ways. Yeah. You know, social engineering is phishing attacks. It's that whole confidence. And conversation. Conversation. Yes. You know, you never know what you let go in a conversation. I've uh, talked about this when I've done talks like protecting yourself. It's it's never letting your guard down that you, you know, like, so you know, they ask you about your birthday. That's on Facebook. They ask you <laughs> about, you, the, you know, what you use as a security question in your dog, things like that. Yes. A lot of the hacks are not as clever as you think someone looked up someone's Facebook and next thing you know they they've pwned their emails they right. they've got into their uh, social media accounts because you left enough information out there that's social engineering it's yes. a non-technical but equally important part of the hacking so it's uh, like I said he kind of scares me the most <laughs> I can lock down ports and firewalls it's can harder locking down people can yes. never lock down people never yeah. red team always wins any red team rule tell you red team always red wins. team always wins you just got to figure out where the vulnerabilities are. <laughs> So that being said, before we, well actually, let's talk a little bit about the Citrix Act because this is what got us off topic, but we said before we start riffing more on it, let's just hit record on the camera. Yeah. So uh, a little background on Citrix. If you don't, didn't know, they developed some really interesting protocols you may have heard of, like remote desktop. So Citrix is well known for that, and a lot of companies use remote desktop. If I'm not mistaken, there's a license agreement. Microsoft licenses all the back end for remote desktop from Citrix. So them exposing what sounds like may have been some of the source code for that is going to offer some really interesting insight. That's going to be the world. fun, <laughs> to say the least. So uh, uh, what's the name of the group that did it? it was um, So there's uh, an Iranian group here called, uh, what are they called? Iridium. Uh, and they have uh, what they call TTPs, right? These mm -hmm. technical uh, procedures that they go through to be able to own these companies 
And what's special about this uh, particular group is they have some uh, unique ways of getting around two-factor authentication to access VPN uh, and uh, other apps through single sign-on. So uh, think about in corporate environments when you get the you know username, which is at your email address and that password and allows you to go to your Slack and your OneDrive and all of those other things. Uh, usually you have to put in some kind of multi-factor authentication, two-factor authentication um, is bare minimum. Uh, they have ways to get around that. So now, uh, I don't know, I think all, I th basically it's just <laughs> no holds bars now. <laughs> you you kind of got to watch your back once, uh, once you have... Uh, an advanced persistent threat out there that can do that kind of thing. And this is some of our plans to really dig down into these because obviously if they have a zero day that they have purchased because they sounds like a government-backed entity yes. over in Iran, it's yeah. fuzzy um, on some of those details, but these are some of those things that we want to kind of get in behind the scenes a little bit more to kind of explain the details. Because the news article right now is big and that's cool, but I like that story behind the news. Yeah, right. While we, we've, we're going to dive into in some of the future episodes, like the actual tools on debriefs that were used. And so, so from what it looks like from the initial uh, information that's coming out, uh, they're saying that weak passwords are involved. Um, they're using what they're calling password spraying, right? So mm -hmm. what I would call a brute force. Um, and since they have these techniques and uh, procedures to be able to bypass multi-factor authentication and two-factor authentication, mm -hmm. uh, when they do land on said weak password, because now people feel like passwords can be weak because they have an MFA, they can make it password. So now when they last land on password, they're expecting to get that text message with that code, but they never get it, and now the bad guys are in yeah, and this is one of the reasons even like PayPal drives me nuts to this day because their their two factor authentication is still SMS. I know, and hijacking a cell phone it's granted simple. it's a targeted attack, but it's a simple attack. Simple. It starts with social engineering. You have to all you have to do is figure out my cell phone number. And honestly, I'm not challenging anyone to do so. <laughs> don't. But I'm gonna say <laughs> don't, please that don't. I realize please don't. I'm not gonna publish my cell phone number, but don't bother publishing it, but I know you could. I know there's some other right. you know it'll only take a minute. <laughs> we know. Yes. <laughs> we respect it. Yeah, we respect that. So there's, so there's, we want to talk a little bit about some of those th stories. The other thing we're going to do is do some of the dive into what we refer to as the lateral movement. So they got in, they got an edge. Mm. How did they move laterally through their networks? Right. Mm. And this is one of those assumptions that I always make from even my own network standpoint. I always assume my attacks are going to come from within. So when I do my own auditing of networks or client networks we audit. I don't audit from the firewall, I audit the firewall, but I actually put a, a device inside and start scanning. I assume mm -hmm. they've somehow have breached a firewall. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of these companies don't do. They just assume the firewall will protect everything and yeah. they don't segment their network properly. So when something inside the network is attacked, so we're gonna be doing some dives into the tooling use and how we, uh, methodologies for some of that. Right, okay. and if you wanna hear more about uh, that train of thought, uh, you should look into assume breach testing uh, that, that's probably a, a good way to get your uh, mind around how one would be able to uh, operate as if they have already been penetrated or their firewall has already been compromised. Yeah, it's almost an assumption you have to make because you never know when someone may plug something. As much as you may lock things down and segment things, you still want to run those scenarios before mm -hmm. someone else is running them. Yeah, on. exactly. <laughs> Maneuvers. <laughs> Better be Maneuvers. prepared. <laughs> Maneuvers. Yeah. So we don't, unfortunately, because this is breaking news, and we just couldn't resist talking about Citrix because <laughs> they're such a big name, uh, uh, talking about that. <laughs> but I'll, I'm going to start with sharing a little bit of story of a client and. I did double check uh, that this is fine for me to talk. Ooh, I know. <laughs> Juicy <laughs> details. Story <the> time. <laughs> and uh, so we, we changed the name to Protect the Innocent. We are not, the, the goal of this at all is never to name these companies, uh, but more provide an education on what occurred with the companies. Right. Yes. And so we've done some breach cleanups and, you know, it's always great when you have red team testing, but unfortunately with small businesses, <laughs> um, their security gets tested in, in real time. Yep. <laughs> and sometimes it loses. Uh, we most have, times it loses. Yeah, most times it loses. And small, small businesses are in a really bad position here in 2019 because they make so many assumptions that they're too small for anyone to care. Mm -hmm. And uh, this company only has maybe 40 employees. They're not that big. Big enough, but not that big. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very sad state of affairs because the, the point of intrusion was the email. And mm -hmm. uh, the email mm -hmm. password was their address plus the street. Yeah, I don't know how they guessed it. I mean, they took the company, and you'd be shocked. Uh, I actually went to I look up Johnny Christmas sometime, and he does some of the talks. You ever met him? 
Yeah. Yeah, he's funny. And uh, he's someone who's uh, talked about this publicly, about passwords. And uh, when I was at one of his keynotes, one of the things he commented on was it's almost so often that they just guess the passwords, but the passwords that work are the street addresses are one of them, uh, the company name plus the street address. So if any of you have that as your password, please stop watching this. Please. Go change, go change it. it right please. now. <laughs> And the, the last one that is not how you guess the CEO's password, but how you guess all the underlings. Johnny Christmas said he learned this only in the last year, that if you drop an F-bomb in front of the company name, that is frequently employees' passwords, because a lot of people hate their jobs. Very true. And he never thought about that. He goes, yeah. he loves his job. So, <laughs> so he never thought he was, turns out you guys hate it. So I hate this place. Turns out to be a popular password there you go. that staff uses. But once again, no two-factor was on there. Now, the hacker got in, it took them a few months of watching because they were being very, very careful. And this mm -hmm. is what happens a lot. They don't just come in and ransack the place. They come in and they sit quietly. And the quiet thing, this particular company was manufacturing. So they're trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we get money out of this manufacturing company? They're B2B, so I'm not going to steal some credit cards or anything like that. They, they're physical manufacturing that mm -hmm. sells to other large businesses that the products they make. So they lied in wait, and there was a uh, corporate junket, as I like to call it, but the CEO of the company was gonna fly down to this event and out of state. And frequently when he flies onto these events, they have a you know materials procurement and things like that, and so they crafted an email on behalf of the CEO who they had access to his email and sent it to the chief financial officer. Hey, yeah. at this such and such place, well-worded email and seems completely relevant, I met this new company that has a great deal on said materials. Go ahead and send it. Uh, here's a authorization for $25,000. Uh, here's the bank routing. Here's you know, the standard process. Everything's good. By the way, they all they had to do is go through a sent email. They had the forms that he used normally for these type of uh, requests. This was not uncommon. But that's that social engineering aspect. Yeah, they had the tools like for perfect the social engineering. Tools. There you had go. Everything in there. Then once they did all this, the process was followed internally exactly as expected. They sent the money. They wired the money to it. The whole thing seemed fine. Done. No one thinks anything of it until CEO comes back from vacation. And he's like, uh... What are you guys talking about? Because they're all asking him. We never got that material shipping you talked about. And now it's also been a couple of weeks, by the way, because oh, you know boy. if you're if you're going out in these junkets, you're always in nice places. You go ahead and it's a business expense, so mm -hmm. you enjoy yourself for the extra week and uh, things like that. This is not uncommon. So the in the person had access to their email even after. Matter of fact, when questions back and forth, they would answer them and then delete all the sent messages, only the ones they sent. Wow. And uh, the good news is uh, they had G Suite, so we were able, G Suite actually has great logging turned on. By the way, Microsoft doesn't. Uh, the mm. default out-of-the-box setting for Office 365 is not to have compliance logging. Mm. That is the default. You have to turn that on in Office. Google defaults to having it. Why Microsoft? Why Microsoft? Why are you Why are you defaulting to, to no? Yeah, I don't know if that's changed recently, but to my knowledge, it hasn't. Uh, hmm. We've dealt with that a couple times when we've had clients that had Office 365. Also, if they happen to pwn the main account, they will turn that off immediately and purge all logs. They didn't do that, though. Even uh, even on the G Suite, when they did not purge any logs. Thank you, because that made it easy to figure out which emails were sent when and uh, blah blah blah. There you go. Because they did not have access to like the financial controller's email, so we seen the emails. We never seen them in the sent because they were being deleted. Okay. Oh boy. So we helped lock it all down, secure it. They uh, went ahead. I, I told them this is a contact the authorities thing. We can lock down your email. We realized that's how they got in. We walked them through it. Once he told us his email password, I. I glazed over and said, well, I know how they got it. Never mind. <laughs> Just, <laughs> done. Yeah, done. 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 And <clears throat> so the debrief of this also, the reason they had to get 30 of all is because they called the bank. The bank said, you wired the money. You fill out the reason form. They had no cybersecurity insurance. The bank said, also, you told us to send the money. Whoops. That means the money wow. was gone. The bank account they sent it to emptied because the company didn't really exist. But they did set up a shell company for this. So some legal manipulating was done. So mm -hmm. they had something kind of to go on. Mm -hmm. But the money had passed around. We really don't know if the money was ever recovered by the FBI or not. But our, they said no. Let's be honest. It's not yeah. very hard to open a bank account. Especially in today's society. You just need an identity and a keyboard. Yes. What did happen, though, was the bank did not give them a refund. So they just got lost on oh, that 25000 yeah. It's all just because of the simple email password. Ouch. Now they had the FBI, they had to worry about a lot of other things, they had to worry about what was in those emails, what else may have been sold, so they had a lot of other concerns. Mm -hmm. The good news is the hackers um, didn't seem to care 
that we could tell. There was nothing forwarded that we noticed because the nice thing about the way G Suite is as well, on the back end, I can see the emails as a log transaction even mm -hmm. though they deleted everything they sent. Mm -hmm. So I could see sent. They weren't sending anything to external email addresses, uh, which was good. There you go. So at least they didn't do that. They got away with that. But these are the type of things that happen a lot. I know it's not like the most technical story, but it goes to that social engineering. Second one I'll share real quick. This uh -oh. is a, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is a company that has a payroll due. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's take a break. Let's, let's, let's take a break. Let's, 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 um, uh, what you are watching, you should not attempt. Let's just throw Please. that out there. There's oh, our no, disclaimer, no, no. all right? Like, we are not uh, endorsing that you do any no. of this because it does sound very juicy. I'll yeah. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Any of this stuff. And these, these are, are zero things. days. These are zero days. But these are things maybe you, if you're working with the permission of your client, and we yes. have done things like yes. this. We've done some security auditing with our clients. You go through and you see this. And this is something a red team might do as well. You have come in and they social engineer their way. They stop at the front counter. And it's yep. just a random person walking in a business. This is what he does. Yep. And uh, ask a few questions to see if they can find out a few little details. And then you start guessing people. And one of the things you can do is either go on LinkedIn or just grab a business card off their desk if you're actually going to the physical layer yeah. uh, like that. But once you know someone's email scheme, you have their email scheme, you can start the guessing process. You shouldn't start that unless you're authorized to do so or you have some type of uh, red team. But these are some of those things that really should be tested. Yep. Companies should always have 2FA turned on and not via SMS. Yep. Yeah. But these are... These are this is happening constantly. This is just one little story from one little IT guy here in Detroit telling you that we've dealt with this. Now the next one, a little bit deeper on the social engineering side, but the same problem. And password was compromised. Password was stupid. Password is also the same one he used for his uh, sports account. He was doing the fantasy sports on Yahoo. And if we remember, Yahoo lost about how many passwords? Wasn't it like all of them? Ooh. All of them? Millions. <laughs> like Millions. over a billion? Yeah, literally. So they assumption be either because the password was stupid it was his favorite sports team mm -hmm. uh i'm not sure why he was a tigers fan either but whatever <laughs> yeah but, uh it, it was tigers 84 last time they won the world series yeah it rocked oh. <laughs> yeah 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 so they get into this this email same thing lie and wait lie and wait they're uh well-crafted email that was actually rather clever is they knew that the guy wouldn't be in the office the, mm. This back this is this time they compromised the chief financial officer and I think the payroll was roughly twenty thousand every week that they had to wire. What they had to do is they had a process for the wire transfer mm -hmm. where they would just email the payroll company in the bank and send the email to them mm. and send it out. Well, this became the opportunity. CFO's out, and so he said the person in the email. They sent the wire transfer immediately as soon as that email got sent. Hooked. They sent another one. Uh, on behalf, as if they were the CFO of the company. That second email was, wait a minute, I just sent the standard form. I meant we're changing payroll companies this week. Wow. And don't bother calling the office. I'm out sick. Uh, if you need to verify, though, anything, just call so-and-so. You know, I got in. This is that social engineering aspect. Yes, he had kids. Yes, he was at home with those sick kids. So he says, you know, Bobby's sick and da-da-da. The email was really nice. He realized that he had a regular interaction back and forth with the banker. He knew her personally. So he made the email personal. The hacker did, not the CFO. This is that whole reading through the emails, understanding sentence structure, understanding like the way they would have talked to them, and then following through. So it seems like, oh, you changed payroll companies. Yeah, you know, we've been thinking about it, which was actually a legit email. They had considered changing payroll companies to another one. So the banker is completely like, oh yeah, you mentioned that. You know, this is, everything checks out. The good news, this has a happier ending. Banker was not allowed. The bank has security protocols to save their butt. Yeah. <laughs> the bank has to call. Has to. And they called because it was a change in their standard uh, going to a different bank house. This has a little bit happier in it. Yeah. But to turn the company into a total panic attack. And it turns out they had a lot more than if, when we started doing it. We just said we need to start rip, wipe and replace, man. Oh, this boy. is a rip and reload. Whoa. They had pwned a lot of stuff because that same password, Tigers84, um, that was his team year password, so they had everyone access to things. So we're not sure what all they installed, but they had a lot of stuff. The thing is, there wasn't a lot to take because they don't. The company didn't have nature of their business did not have a lot of credit cards. 
thankfully, or they thankfully. would have set up a credit card scammer or something like that. Right. Yes. But these are those kind of hacks that happen. So we to de to get everything out, we just started reloading all our equipment. It was easier. We knew what they had access to. Right. We knew what he had loaded Team Viewer on. Uh, so we were able to pull through there. So at least this one is a happy ending. They didn't lose any money. But, Woohoo! But they care about security now. So there's a double happy ending. They actually care. See, the other company cared, but it cost them a call the FBI. A bunch of money, a bunch of our time. This one only costs a bunch of our time. No yeah. FBI. The FBI is never excited. I know it's their no. job, but they're never excited to come out and deal with this sort of thing. No, they're not excited to come out and deal with it. Also, now you have the FBI at your office, and that's a big distraction. Yeah. Because uh, the rest of the staff wants to know why the FBI is there. Yeah. <laughs> they, Basically. Your your staff gets nervous when that see that happen. Yeah. They, they're, yeah. Look, these guys in suits. That looks serious. Oh yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> no smiles on their faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a couple that I, I I brought to share. Like I said. They're, they're more the social engineering side. We plan to do a few deep dives where we're going to get more uh, technical. This is the first episode, and we want some feedback from our audience to uh, figure out what you want to know about. You know, and a couple of our inspiration for this show is uh, Darknet Diaries. Um, we'll list all the hacker blogs that we read, but, you know, everything from dark reading to... Uh, pretty much, yeah, on, uh, on Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> you know, and it, there's so much security news that's why we feel there needs to be more of it because we need to raise more awareness yep, and we yeah. want to really dive into a lot of the methodologies because that's what people, uh, you, you need to know how you're being attacked. When I go to conferences, the ones I'm excited to go to aren't other IT conferences, it's hanging out with people like him because I want to know how they're getting in so I can protect my clients better and we're hoping to educate more of you. So if you're in a position of a sysadmin, you're in a position to be uh, in a defensive position because of your title at the company and you can wave the flag and get them talked into it which how hard is that sometimes oh uh, so that's an entire episode worth of difficulty i can start to go into that but um i'll, I'll put it to you like this without data um, and some things are very hard to acquire data on but without data you can never even start the conversation around uh increasing controls or increasing security because you got to understand what security ends up truly being is a warm security blanket all right as a red teamer, I know no matter, well, I'm really a purple teamer. As a purple teamer, mm -hmm. I know the red team in me will not even, a, a, the, there are factors beyond what I can implement at the blue team level <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that will uh, always compromise and allow red teamers to win. And so the that's the reason why I'm purple team, because for all those losses I get on the blue team, I would love to get some wins <laughs> as a red teamer. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I said, that's kind of the whole purpose of us putting this together. And this is episode one, so no, we didn't dive as deep as nah. we'd like to in all this. <laughs> but it's kind of wet the palette and get some ideas together. Uh, we He's got actually a lot more context than I do, so we're going to have some guests who have done some of the... We want to get some red team people on here that have done some stuff. People and, are excited about this. Yes, yes. We have a few of them that they, they want to come on as guests on the show. And we, we want to share these stories with you and things like that. This is... We, you can tell I'm smiling because I get excited about it. It's, it's the cleverness, the, the hacking side is it's exhilarating. And being able to do it legally is very exhilarating. Yes, yes. Doing it illegally and stuff that we're not going to talk about. It's stuff, overly exhilarating. It's overly exhilarating. <laughs> 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 but it's a lot of fun. And we all know each other, too, because we, we host a, uh, a local meetup. So if you happen to be watching this in the Detroit area, yeah. dc 313 dc313.org. Come on by. Please. Um, we are every other Wednesday. If you are watching this, let's say on a Monday, it is yeah. the Wednesday of this week. Um, and come on by and have some drinks and have some beer and hack some machines. We love to do hackthebox.eu. Free plug. Clink. Yep, hackthebox.eu. That's going to be on uh, March 13th. So if it's past March 13th, 2019, it's long past. But Sorry. don't worry. We're trying to look us up. dc 313org uh, Come visit us. Message us. Send us some air. We're on Meetup. Meet up, we're on meet up. We'll leave all the contacts and everything. And of course, you can always reach me through uh, lawrencesystems.com. I'll leave ways you can reach uh, these two gentlemen as well. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Let us know what you think. Thank you very much right. for your time. And we will see you again. Yes, thank oh, you. And see you can you continue time. discussion at my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com, and things like that as usual. All my usual links. Thanks. Thanks. Later. Simple.